Here we go again. This time we are northbound next to a bombing range on the New Mexico backcountry discovery route. Come on, dude, come on. Oh man. So my pants are drenched. Something you don't see very often is me voluntarily getting up before the sun. But you know, the desert, it's hot. So I'm gonna try to get going early. Try to beat the heat. That's the sunrise, people. I've actually done it. The rain flap is even off the thing you sleep in over there. It's new shirt day. I bought this shirt at the Walmart. Come on, truer things. Who doesn't need a little bit of this in their life? White shirt, bad idea. Trip like this, yeah, probably. There we go, ready for the world, fresh and clean. I got up at 7.30 this morning. It is now 9.07. I can't do it any faster than that. And we're off. And we're stopping? Didn't expect a fork in the road there. Where are we going? Right, the other way. I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't feeling all that optimistic about this day of the trip. I was kind of feeling like I was hitting a lull, getting used to life on the road. Nothing was new anymore, and it definitely wasn't very exciting to me to be looking at the prospect of riding a very straight road up the edge of a military installation. But this track was gonna surprise me. How cool is that, man? At some point, this was like, Norway? Iceland. Yeah, Iceland. Oh, you see those people just sitting there watching the lava progress? This was it. This is the end of the progression of this volcano. It's cool that it's here. Who knew? How you guys doing? Pretty good, yourself? Good. Good. Just driving around? Yeah. yeah. Local? From uh, Cruces. 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 Cruces and Cruces. You? I'm from Santa Fe. I'm okay. doing the backcountry discovery route. Uh -huh. Dang! The... Were you laying up, uh, did you camp out? Yeah. yeah. Do you know anything about this lava flow? Do you know where it came from? Mud pies, they call them. Mud pies? Yeah. In the maps. Okay. Mud pies. And I don't know what the hell mud pies were until I got out here nothing but lava rock. I wonder if it just came out from the ground flat like this instead of from a mountain kind I'll of thing. I bet it did came up. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no other... There's no high structure. No around height. it? Yeah. All right, you guys have fun. All right, you, you too, man. Enjoy. Happily, that weird little probably fake tail of a missile was the only evidence I ever really saw of any kind of missiles or bombs or military of any sort. The only other thing that showed any evidence was this tiny little ranch hand barbed wire fence. Got these signs. No oh, didn't have anything written on it. I want to read one. There's one. U.S. government property. Cheap little sign. Do not come in here. We will blow you up. That's what that said. How cool are those? Have I mentioned to you yet that I have not made a dime all year? It's the end of October. In fact, I've lost money. So I play poker for a living now. I used to be a circus acrobat, do some woodworking. It's kind of a mystery how I make a living. Mostly, mostly I just know how to live on very little money. But the thing that I've done most consistently for 20 years now almost is play poker. I had a really frustrating road trip when I went to Austin last year at the end of the year where I was up a good amount of money and I ended up losing all the winnings and then losing some back. And since then I've just been running bad and felt snake bit. So I've just been living off savings since then, which is running out. So at the end of this trip, I will be going to El Paso to play some poker. Eventually I plan on heading into Mexico and then maybe just keep riding south from there and making videos along the way, maybe playing poker along the way to fund things because I assume it'll take me a long time if ever to start making money off of YouTube videos.
Man, look how cool this is. So that's my story. That is part of what this trip is about. Mostly it's just about this trip. Just to ride a bike all across the state. This place is cool. This road's been graded pretty recently, I assume. It's usually sandier. Everybody says sand is better if you go faster, but I have not found the speed yet. Whoa! We're nearly done with this section. We're gonna make some miles today. Ah, there's the greeter. I was not filming, but I did hit a pretty decent patch of sand back there, so I'm suspecting that there will be more coming up, like right here. <laughs> Stay in the gas, Andy. You have done some sand before. Come on. Just steer with your feet, they say. Just steer with your feet. Yeah, that is working. It's just a very strange feeling to get used to. So you can make suggestions to your motorcycle and it'll decide in a little while whether it wants to respond or not. I have survived the sand until this point. I don't know if you can see that little skid there. That one about got me. But really we stopped because we've got this gate in front of us. Sand covered hill. This will be fun. says and then almost loses it. Man, it is so weird. You kind of just have to let the motorcycle do what it's going to do. Give it suggestions. It'll come back to you eventually. Kind of. Don't hit the brakes. Just coast to a stop if you need to coast to a stop. Man, if you've ridden this without the grader having just come through, curious to hear how much worse it usually is. The good thing about falling in the sand is that you fall in the sand, it's soft. But I still don't like falling. Oh, I think we are out of the sand here. So that little section of road that I had kind of been looking at on the map and dreading actually ended up being one of my favorites, I think. I started feeling a lot more confident in the sand and that little forest of yucca was really cool to ride through. Overall it was great. It was about 50 miles from where I camped back to the asphalt here. Look at that asphalt. Haha, <laughs> asphalt! And so I traded the long straight dirt road for a long straight paved road. It didn't really have much to show you but it was nice to stretch my legs for a little while, and the highway itself kind of reminded me that I should probably take a break, so at the next turn off for the dirt. Oh yeah, I forgot about this shirt. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I'm gonna have a cup of tea. Mmm, tea. Hey guys. It's a nice spot you got there. You're not shy, you're just coming over, huh? Dude, your horns kind of scare me. No, no, I don't have anything for you guys. And off we head down another long straight dirt road in New Mexico. This one heads east instead of north. And thankfully it doesn't stay straight very long. It gets pretty fun pretty quickly. It starts to climb through a tiny little pass over these hills. Ooh, a little dust devil, did you see it? Just let this guy cruise past. This is a pretty cool little road. Started out just two or three really fast straight sections of dirt road, not gravel. Now we're going to climb this hill. So the road is doing interesting things. And after the interesting bit, we got this long, fast, flowy, fun section that's probably a little dangerous. For me at least. Dangerous just because at this point I feel like I can ride a little faster than I probably should and so I am trying to keep the reins on it just a little bit. 
Got all excited to change the battery. I didn't even close the top of the bag. And you remember my backpack? This is where I found it. Surprised it wasn't caught up in the rear wheel. Very lucky. Oh, shit. Not very lucky. I was wrong. Damn. So much for this backpack. What do I do now? Ah, that was stupid. What a stupid mistake that is. There's either backpack repairs coming, or this backpack is gone. Was that? Oh, I bet that was exhaust, not tire. Yeah, it was right in front of the exhaust down there. That is so stupid. All right, what do I do? I think I'm gonna have to buy a backpack. Oh, there's that bag. Okay. <laughs> found a bag on a trail when I was setting up cameras in Santa Fe and I brought it. I don't know why I brought it actually. Here's the thing. Goes, goes really well with my shirt. And hopefully it is. Stronger than we think. And we should be good? What do you think? I think so. All right, this is going to work. Is that everything? That's everything. Dude. Ah, oh, that rope makes terrible noises. Okay, I think we're good. How you doing? Hi. I'm good. Wow. Oh. You on the BDI? Okay. You doing the BDI? Yeah. Cool. Me too. Other direction. You like that thing? Yeah. Everybody seems it's to. Very capable. Sorry, I got earplugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of so. course. <laughs> Everybody seems to like them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're very capable. Yeah. Good. So. Enjoy. Great. All right. I see you're videoing, so. <laughs> Put this on the same way. I'm gonna put this on the same way. All right, it's not going anywhere. We're off again. This is a very fun road just after the northbound road right next to White Sands Missile Ranch. After the straight asphalt section that I'm sure some people take very fast. I don't think that many people should be wide open on a route like this. It's gonna last for so long, but everybody's gonna push it a little bit at some point, probably. Anybody up for some more highway? I cheated a little bit and looked at the readout on my GPS at the next gas stop where it said 128 miles already, which lines this up pretty easily to be the longest day of the trip so far. So pulling into Carrizozo, New Mexico right now, I think it's time to sit on the curb and have a snack after I fill up here. Hello, Allsups. Seems like you should go to as many Allsups as possible when you're doing a New Mexico themed tour, or just a New Mexico tour. Special methods for filling an XR. Stuff paper towels all around it because you're gonna spill oil. Store your dipstick somewhere. Put your oil out. It will appear to be honey at first sight. It's only because it's a honey bottle from Trader Joe's, but they have what you need. This little guy here, so that you can turn it upside down. It's not leaking, just upside down completely. And then you gotta aim a little bit above the hole and just squeeze that right in there. You can stop and it's not going to leak. You can get the air back in the bottle. At this point I think it's worth saying that 
All of this was filmed in October of 2023. And leaving Carrizozo, New Mexico, headed towards Ruidoso, New Mexico. You turn off on this dirt road, and in October, all these leaves are changing, and it is amazing. Or it was amazing. I'm not sure what it looks like right now, because in the summer of 2024, there was a huge fire around Ruidoso. The town was evacuated right away. And they saved the town from what I understand, but there have of course been floods afterwards, and I'm not sure exactly how much of this was damaged. From looking at the map in the satellite images, it looks like stuff close to the road wasn't burned, but maybe the hilltops off in the distance got burned. Anyway, on this day, it was absolutely amazing. Oh my god, it's magic here! I doubt the colors were at their peak at this moment, but it was really a pleasure to ride over this little pass up toward Nogal Peak and then come back down to the place where I would camp for the evening but looking at it now I can't really think about much except for what it might look like today and again I am not sure I would love to hear what it's like right now most of all I just have some real feelings thinking about the people in this area just being evacuated must have been terrifying but I'm sure there's some people in the area that really went through some nightmares. I'm pretty sure we're past the prime on these leaves, but there have been a couple of really spectacular moments. If you hit it just perfect, man, it's gonna be incredible up here. God, it does make me wanna go to the East Coast somewhere, somewhere with a hardwood forest and see that. This will do just fine. Got some fire rings. It's got a log I can drag over to sit on. Tins are kind of magic, I think. I really enjoy putting it up. It's kind of, it's silly, but. It's just this much cloth, and then, think, tiny little house. Cold little house, but tiny little house. It's pretty good. Okay, we are back here on the backpack project. We had our dinner, we have our fire. If all goes poorly, I can just throw this backpack in the fire. Okay, oh, not that ugly. I think I'll cut some of this away. I have no idea if this is the right thing to do. I have moved on from the scissors to the pliers, but I am fairly optimistic about this fix. It's not a whole pass, I've just done from here to here, but I'll put my hand inside and see what's up. So here's from the main compartment. And you can really tell how screwed up my hands are when I'm trying to thread a needle. Nine days on the trail has not done my fingers any justice. Had a pretty good night, I think. Fixed the bag. <laughs> There's still a hole through it, obviously, but It's pretty well sewn. This campsite was really nice. Found some wood. It's very dry here, but it was really nice to have a fire. I didn't think I was gonna make a fire in the morning. I'm gonna go, I stopped just short of Rudoso, and I'm gonna go in there and eat breakfast at a restaurant. Crows chasing each other around up there. Love the sound of 
the air. That was it right there. I doubt you could hear it, but the sound of the air pushed by the crow's wings, it's so distinct. It feels weird to be closing in on the end of it. Uh, I am dirty. My hands are broken. There's so many like little fidgety buckles and stuff on luggage and these zippers on these bags that I knew to start out with were no good, but these are the bags that came with the bike and I just wanted to, I wanted to do it to see how bad it was. I knew they were the wrong bags, no question. Uh, but, you know, they're bags and they cost zero money. Start to the morning, 10.56. Bright and early like usual. What is this? It's day 10 this trip. That means that I have had nine days in a row of instant oatmeal at a campsite before getting on the road. Well, eight days. I had no breakfast in Chloride Canyon. I think it's high time to get to a town and have a breakfast. I've never been to Rudoso, New Mexico before. I looked up Huevos Rancheros on Google Maps. There were two places rated 4.6. I chose... Where is it? Is that it? Yes, Pena's place. Those were acceptable Huevo Trancheros. That is all I can say about them. I think this is the first cloudy day I've had. I don't think there's been a hint of clouds in the sky this whole trip. Look at this guy, yeah. Oh yeah, this is the good side of town. If you, if you need your smelly candles or your stickers and t-shirts. Kind of smells like one of those candle shops here. How is that possible? Whoa, that guy's got good stuff. I'm going to take a look at his stuff. Wow, look at that bus. I would love to get a chassis like that. Leave a patina and put it on an electric chassis. And use it as an RV. This place is cool as hell. What does he do with that Texaco truck? I have no idea what the story is with this place, but they make some cool, funky cars. I like them. I would have liked to find out more about this place, but midday on a Monday is apparently not when Mr. Balls gets rusty, so. This feels a little weird being on Four lane highway, two lane highway, I don't know what this is. Of course, by pretty weird, I mean terrible. I didn't like riding on this road at all. It was the biggest one I'd been on since I left home, and it was only 10 miles, but I was very happy to get back on the dirt. That is White Sands, New Mexico. Not the missile range, but the white sand. It's pretty cool. It's pretty hard to make out, but just there on the horizon, there's like a little strip of white, white, white sand. After an off-camera surprise phone call from my dad and an initially startling conversation with a landowner from down the hill who rolled up on a camouflaged quad with a gun rack, who turned out to be a pretty nice guy, actually. He told me he was just looking out for poachers. He had heard me drive by his property and thought he'd have a look and then headed up this same canyon where I was heading after telling me that it was a nice little ride and he was right. A fun ride with some pretty trees and some nice turns. I had a good old time. And it was the start of a long climb from about 5,200 feet when I got off the highway to 8,800 feet in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, a town that was definitely gonna earn its name. Still Lincoln National Forest, I'm surprised. Somebody's hidden stash of cars back here. Oh, I like that van. I think I could use a brake, probably. Here we go. Perfect. I think I still have Ritz in my backpack. I definitely still have cheese in my backpack. Ten days into this ride, my body was really starting to feel it. Mostly in my back, probably in my tiredness. <laughs> and a little in my balance, maybe? Steep, narrow, winding road. Next three miles. 
ominous clouds at the top of this. Ooh, just sat down for a break, had some tea and crackers and cheese. I feel like I about fell asleep. My back is tired. Feels fine. Just tired. Whoa. That's wild. Those are beautiful mountains with that red. And then we were driving at a cliff. Turkey! Look at the turkey right here. So many of them. That is cool. Look at those guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen ish. That's cool. As we climbed higher and higher, there started to be more and more stands of aspen that were just peaking exactly on this day. It was amazing and I would have loved to show you more, but being a newbie with the GoPro, I pretty much had it pointed directly at my handlebars a lot of the time today. Jesus. Okay, it's actually raining now. Can you see that on my legs? Yeah, okay, it's kind of cold. I really hope you guys could see those aspen because they were amazing. All of them. That last stand of them was so good. It was getting cold up here. I don't think it's really gonna rain. So I'm just gonna throw this underneath. Never mind, this is real rain. I wonder if my jacket's big enough to go over my backpack. Haha! -ha! Just don't breathe, I think. Here are all my problems. You're not waterproof. I think my phone is waterproof because it's cracked. My thoughts initially, I think, were correct. It stopped raining, at least for the most part, pretty soon after I got all this kit on. So it definitely rained. I've been driving like directly into the sun, so it's not easy. But I mean, you kinda gotta give it up. How ridiculous is that. So I'm in the Lincoln National Forest again. The brush is super thick. This is a gorgeous forest, but I have yet to see any campsites. I would much rather be in a tent right now. Well, I don't know if I would. I would rather have some dry pants at some point, which I don't have and am not gonna have, but this is worth it for sure. Gonna have to sleep in my pants to dry them off tonight. I think everything else is fine, but I'm not sure. But this is really special right now. Well, this is the very first campsite I came upon. And I don't know if you can see it right now, but it's ridiculous. Uh, it's tiny and it's just at this bend in the road, this U behind me. The rain is lightening up. I have no idea what the rain is supposed to do, but Look at that thing. It's it's like some kind of little magical land here. Oh, I just got my helmet off and my uh, earplugs out. I hadn't heard the sound before. 
Can you hear that sound of that rain? I don't know if you can, but it's really nice. But it will be, I guarantee, very muddy. I slipped just getting off my bike, and I'm going to put my tent down right on top of that. And it is in kind of the bottom of a gully here. I just realized. <laughs> and it's raining. Do I need to rethink this? It's so pretty though, dude. Ah, I don't know what to do. I'm pretty sure I'm staying here. I'm just gonna set my tent right behind this bike right now. Hopefully I can find a little bit of wood and make a fire. I see some already. Hopefully it's not too wet to get lit. Bye. God, what a great end to the day that was. I have always loved riding in bad weather if I'm well prepared and I never put my rain pants on so I don't know if I would say I was well prepared because my pants are completely saturated right now but that was great. That felt very successful. <laughs> my guess is that uh, no more is going to come of this rain because that's the way New Mexico is. <laughs> but having put this tent up nine times now, this is the tenth night in a row, and never having any precipitation. There was, there's never even been dew on the tent when I woke up. It has felt a little silly, so it feels kind of nice to set the tent up. And it feels amazing in this fall forest. With these oak colors, I think it went really well. <laughs> the end of this day, even though I'm very wet. Hopefully I can dry a little by the fire and not entirely asleep while asleep in my sleeping bag, but we'll see. So I got a fire going. I couldn't get the stove going, so I'm cooking on the fire. But mostly I started this video to show you the steam coming from my pants if I straddle the fire. So that's effective, clearly until it becomes smoke, I guess.